Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody, we spoke about the uh, linear dynamics of a thermoacoustic system, we uh, in particular paid quite a bit of attention on the non-normal aspects of the linearized operator. Uh, we saw that the linearized operator was non-normal and we talked about transient growth and its consequences and so on. Then we spoke about some ways and means to analyze transient growth talking about using SVD, singular value decomposition and the concept like pseudo spectra and so on. Uh, I think I will stop on this with that but if you are interested in discussing more you can come to me, I love this topic, we are the ones who started this business in thermoacoustics. Now uh, I will uh, wind up the discussion with um, discussion on nonlinear dynamics and uh, first I will speak in general about nonlinear dynamics and then uh, briefly about uh, bifurcations in uh, our thermoacoustic systems and uh, I just want to uh, remind you that we studied everything based on some model that I made, some kind of toy model uh, based on uh, uh, some acoustic equations uh, used along with uh, the correlation for heat release rate by uh, Heckel uh, and the model was developed by Balasabramanya and <coughs> so the results, the general results hold because there is thermoacoustic system as we saw is in general non-normal and we will have transient growth in general but the specific things will depend on the specific nature of the system. Same with the nonlinear dynamics, uh, what kind of bifurcation you get etc. Uh, some details may differ based on the model to model but there is some universality behind it uh, that is what I will speak about now. So uh, I do not know how many of you have studied dynamical systems here, Ganesh we have studied dynamic shook head in 5 degrees of freedom. So. You know about bifurcation? Do you know what is a bifurcation? Like it is a very fundamental level. Uh, I will give a example which uh, you all definitely know but uh, do not look at it as a uh, bifurcation. So I think in I do not know strength of materials or some uh, aircraft structures you must have studied columns or civil engineering. So we will have a column and there is a weight here. And as opposed to a beam where you apply a load and keeps bending continuously, here it will stay like this fine. But then at uh, as you increase the weight, you keep it keep on increasing smoothly. At some point it will stop being this and then it will start buckling. So So you keep on increasing everything will be smooth and then suddenly it will buckle and you will be smoothly increasing the weight. So weight is like the weight you apply is like the load on the top and that is like a, a parameter for the problem and so you slowly increase it suddenly the column will abruptly buckle. So can everybody relate to this example? Yeah everybody can relate. So this is a, a case where uh, uh, you are changing the parameter, I mean when you speak about engineering you are changing the weight which is applied or the load which is applied but we call that parameter. So in this problem we are continuously changing the parameter, we are smoothly changing the parameter, it is not like a, I suddenly put a bang and broke into something. And a smooth change in the parameter suddenly results in a qualitative difference in the solution or, or the uh, observed behavior. So this is like a bifurcation, so that is something. Uh, we see in a Ricci tube, you keep changing the heat release rate slowly, uh, the mean heat release rate or the in our Ricci tube which we saw the video and so on, we keep increasing the heat of power and suddenly there is onset of oscillations. So that is like a uh, everything was steady and quiet kind of analogous to a nice column which is standing there and abruptly the oscillations had uh, came or had we had onset of oscillation, it is like abruptly the column is buckling. So these are all examples of bifurcations. So 
uh, there is this uh, subject called dynamic systems, so uh, which has been quite popular in the last 30 years or so. And uh, so here is a nice reference which is there in the uh, library. Uh, Hirsch, Smale, and Devane. I will write it down. Uh, there is another uh, very nice uh, reference trogats. These are Indian editions, so they are quite cheap. And there is uh, another book by Pushpavanam, which is Mathematical Methods in Chemical Engineering. And uh, this Pushpavanam is prof in IIT Madras, so very inexpensive books. So I would um, urge you to uh, take a look at this because in a modern engineering practice, uh, I think knowing bifurcation theory will greatly help you to describe and analyze and, and the uh, engineering system. So write down these references which are really nice. So this is a really nice book, it, uh, it also talks about the linear dynamics, it explains what is eigenvalue, what is the meaning in addition to of course the nonlinear dynamics. Uh, this is a really nice book, uh, it is available in library and it is not very expensive. The second book that I would recommend is uh, both books have a lot of examples and a lot of nice descriptions. So this is one, there are plenty of books actually. These are the books I have read which I am prescribing. I will give the Indian publisher's name, uh, Indian edition by uh, Levant Books, yeah, 2007, yeah. the last one. Uh, other than these three books, I will give you also another very valuable reference, Pushpavanam. Uh, See which year it is in two thousand These are really nice book, and there is a really nice uh, lecture series in NPTEL uh, available by Professor Balakrishnan uh, on this subject, which is uh, really charming and thrilling to watch. I have watched it. Some lectures I've watched many times. Just it's so nicely he has explained. So I would uh, definitely uh, ask you to see the NPTEL course by Professor Balakrishnan. On dynamical systems. Professor Balakrishnan is a professor in physics department in IIT Madras. Okay, so uh, having said these things, uh, yeah, uh, there is a class which is offered by physics department. I think every other semester, 
this semester also it's running run by Neelima Gupta it's very nice I have taken the class myself. <coughs> so we call our so we studied thermoacoustic system so generalization of that will be a dynamical system dynamic system in a system which has dynamics it's a very exciting thing I mean not just quasi steady as we studied in four years of engineering everything is steady and stationary and you apply a load uh, we do not worry about how the beam bends but we have a bend shape and so on. Now here we studied about the uh, dynamics of how things evolve and in reality things evolve. So uh, a dynamical system uh, is a time evolving model of a physical system the physical systems and we are models so uh, or we are which in with which we attempt to recreate their behavior and uh, so the, the uh, dynamic system theory is the study of such systems. So this is a, a time evolving model of a so this is a dynamical system and you can have uh, autonomous systems and non autonomous systems you can have I will uh, restrict my discussions to only to autonomous systems that does not mean by any way non autonomous systems are not important or something but we are uh, I mean in this small lecture I am uh, uh, constraining myself to that. So a dynamical system will consist of variables and parameters so we have the state variables So try to relate everything I am saying in a general sense to what we studied in the specific problem. I did not want to start with a lecture on dynamical system because then the whole thing will sound abstract so I wanted to do the problem and then go back and try to put it in the context of the theory that way I think uh, I, I thought you will appreciate it better. So what were our state variables in our model of the re tube? The chi's which actually corresponded to pressure and velocity which we expressed so we had a PDE where we had pressure and velocity and then we had reduced it to ordinary dif differential equation ODE in the form of eta's and eta dot they are the state variables and we have parameters. Can you explain what were the parameters in our model or some of the parameters heater power or the wire temperature and then uh, mesh size area of the uh, uh, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, in our particular model, we didn't have um, length coming because we are non-dimensionalize everything with L. Uh, but he, uh, wire temperature was a parameter. Damping values uh, C1, C2, they were parameters, and uh, uh, location of the heater in the duct XF was a parameter. Time Sorry, time lag. Time lag. Yeah, time lag. How was a parameter? Uh, yeah. So we had which actually. In reality um, it, it is a serious parameter although we wonder if you wonder how will you change time lag is there some meter with which you can adjust time lag no, by changing the flow, uh, by changing the flow so, uh, so time lag is a very important parameter, per parameter uh, which we actually change by changing the flow. So these are the parameters so we have variables and parameters so uh, we write in the form d chi over dt equal to f of chi comma mu mu so chi is the state variable mu is the parameter so this would be called a representation by as a flow there is no color chalk okay. we can also represent in another way as a map whereby we say chi i plus 1 equal to f of chi i comma mu so this would be map where the value at i plus 1th instant would would be a function of value at the ith instant and those parameters so if you are talking about a digital system if you are doing time series analysis or system identification this would be the uh, their prefer or uh, even digital control they would use this kind of uh, uh, this kind of analysis physicists use it a lot uh, 
but here I will um, we, we, we use this representation the flow representation because we wrote a differential equation but had we uh, suppose we did not write a differential equation we had different equations then we could have used the maps and both are studied very extensively. So, uh, we just saw that uh, so such systems can have bifurcation can and they will uh, uh, show qualitative uh, change in the behavior for changes in parameters parameters are this mu. So, so, we saw in this uh, case of the column that you had a weight and you kept increasing the weight and suddenly the behavior changed. So, this uh, this is called uh, this is a kind of bifurcation this is not the only kind of bifurcation there are uh, several kind of uh, bifurcation. For example, sometimes you may have a flame you may not have a flame in a combustor. So, there is some kind of bifurcation the flame is there the flame is not there and you can have different state the flame may be blown off or it may hold that would be some other kind of bifurcation. So, there are plenty of examples of uh, bifurcations and uh, bifurcations are quite important uh, scientifically because they provide models for transitions from one state to another or instabilities uh, which occur as some control parameters vary. I mean in our case we saw instability occurring in the Riki tube, but the other cases where um, some other kind of transitions can take place. There is a possibility that you can go from one steady state to another steady state that is also uh, very much a legitimate bifurcation. So, uh, let me just uh, write down uh, formally what is a uh, bifurcation. <coughs> So, So, nonlinear dynamical systems can have multiple solutions for a given system configurations. So, we want to have a visual representation uh, of all the solutions that is what we are trying to get. but this is not enough we want to know if the solutions are stable only then we will know whether the solution can stay in the nature or not and their stability and we want to know this as a function of the parameters this uh, mu here. So, this would be called a bifurcation plot. So, we want to uh, there is a dynamical system it can have multiple solutions and we want to have visual representation of all the solutions and not just that we want to know whether they are stable or not you may have two let us say two steady states, but if one is unstable then we would not see it uh, in the nature because it cannot stay there even if you put it there any slightest disturbance will take it away to uh, out of the state and may go to another state. Now, <coughs> so we saw that if you change the weight in this column example slightly you got the behavior change uh, or in thermox system till some power there were no oscillation and suddenly the oscillations were onset. So, uh, you can have a qualitative change in the solution. for smooth variation of system parameters. This would be called a bifurcation.
So there are lots of examples of bifurcations in nature, but generally people are trying to classify them into a certain uh, number of bifurcations. Now uh, dynamic systems uh, theory also deals with, we, we, are, we are looking at limit cycle oscillation, but there are other final states like quasi periodic state, chaotic state, pitch doubling and, and so on and so forth. I will not go into those things, but privately I am open to discussion. We do see all those things in thermoacoustics. Uh, but at the moment I will not, uh, so those are secondary bifurcation. You have a bifurcation to go to a limit cycle from there that can break up and then go to a chaotic state and, and so on. But I will not uh, speak uh, much about those things, but we can have private discussions outside the class. So uh, I will um, give a general classification of bifurcations and then in that context I will present where our bifurcation is so that you can see because what we saw was just. Uh, I mean we saw through example, we saw through our simulations uh, that I showed uh, the results from the simulation that we saw a certain type of behavior. Uh, now we should not think that that is the only type of behavior uh, like we have the story of frog in a well, it has seen the well and thinks that the universe is that. So we should not have such illusions, there are other things and uh, so the scientists have studied a lot of things and said that okay there are maybe 5 or 6 wells. And uh, I mean, or they would see hundreds of wells, but they would classify it as okay, this belongs to this type, this belongs to that type, this belongs to that type. Perhaps some one of you will bring a new type of bifurcation that is possible also. So, is there any questions on anything so far? Yes, question. In bifurcation and uh, instability, generally, uh, one mode will be. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. Right. Any other case? Hmm. So, is there any uh, place where we control this uh, instability by uh, taking energy from that particular mode uh, and allocating into some other form of energy, like mechanical energy to future? Yeah, if you put like a Helmholtz resonator damp it, or um, that is one way, or here, for example, in this system, we have these uh, walls and walls are these holes like in uh, they absorb sound. So here actually it takes the sound and you convert into fluid mechanics, they, the sound hits the holes and sheds vortices on the other side and so you, you are converting uh, energy in the acoustic mode to a fluid mechanics or a vorticity kind of mode. So yes, I mean that is the way you take out sound. Instabilities. Hmm. So, um, vibrations will be there. Can we convert that vibration energy into some other form of energy? Yeah, in principle, yes. To do it specifically, you have to have a specific solution. So, I mean, I do not have any, I have no experience converting helicopter vibrations to anything else, but about thermoacoustics, yes, I can speak about or acoustics itself. Yeah. Any other uh, other examples would be like you said one form convert to another. So if, if you have entropy fluctuation going through a nozzle, I said it creates sound waves. So that is you are having energy in the entropy mode give rise to uh, acoustic mode. So you can not only just take from acoustics, you can give to acoustics also. So, but if you ask me about uh, several other subjects, I may not have answer. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Any other question? Rajesh, yeah. Look very amused about all this. So, let us say we have solutions which are uh, stationary point or fixed point. steady state okay so we can have two kinds of bifurcation we can have static bifurcation and we can have what is called dynamic or dynamic hof bifurcation so your solution can be like a steady kind of solution where you can 
uh, have some solution which satisfies this equation uh, this this can go to 0 f itself going to 0 would be a solution but you can also have a, a periodic solution for, for example satisfying this equation that will be a limit cycle that means uh, some uh, chi at some time will be same as chi at that time plus the time period or we can have a chaotic solution or quasi periodic solution so many solutions are possible okay uh, so we have um, static solution that means you go from one steady state to some other kind of steady state or we have dynamic uh, Hopf bifurcation where you go from a steady state to a oscillatory kind of solution okay and uh, so now here we have uh, so these are called primary bifurcations and uh, the dynamic Hopf then ha undergoes secondary bifurcations and then moves towards chaos but we will not speak about this okay here. So here we can have pitchfork bifurcation transcritical and saddle knot. So in all these cases if you look at the eigenvalues of the linear system so you have eigenvalues lying on this horizontal axis and when you say eigenvalues when the um, in our thermoacoustic problems when we studied the McManus problem we were writing everything as e power i omega t but then when we were studying non normal operators and all, we switched to the physics people notation e power lambda t so lambda uh, is uh, eigenvalue i omega is also eigenvalue it's just that mathematicians like to write e power i omega t physicists write e power lambda t or you are free to pick any of them so if you are having e power lambda t the left half would be stable right half would be unstable because the eigenvalue is on the right side so it is e power lambda t e power real part times t is the one which is exponentially growing. Now if you are a mathematician all you have to do is turn it 90 degree and the upper half will be unstable lower half will be stable depending on e power i omega t or minus i omega t. So you are free to choose all that so here I will follow the physicist notation because that is what is followed in most of the dynamical systems book. So you are here on this real axis so this side is stable and the linearized systems eigenvalue will cross over in all these cases and then you will go to unstable but only the linearized system uh, eigenvalues are crossing over that means that the, the linearized system will exponentially blow up but that does not mean the actual system will blow up it will actually go to some other state okay in all this bifurcation. So we should not get carried away by our exponential growth or something like that because that is for the linearized system and it is valid only in the immediate vicinity of the uh, that particular point about which you are linearizing not anywhere else okay so that is something we have to uh, watch out. So we look at pitchfork bifurcation so, uh, so let us say this is a parameter some any parameter mu okay and this is some kind of measure or some value and so you will I, I, I will fill circles will be denoting stable solutions and then now this becomes unstable and then you can have so th this would be like a like a fork that is why it is called pitch fork so you have stable fixed points and you have unstable fixed points but then you have solutions this way. Now transcritical would, would be this way you have stable fixed points and you have unstable fixed points but once you reach some uh, reach here the bifurcation occurs you get stable solution here and unstable solutions here so the way it is it switches now saddle node would be uh, tried below so these are fill circles and these are hollow circles and generally they show this as half filled and half hollow that would mean it is a neutral stable point. 
So, these are the static bifurcation from one state it is going to another state and that is not what we saw in our thermoacoustic system, we saw oscillations. So, that is actually a dynamic system. So, it uh, in, in a dynamic Hopf bifurcation when it occurs you get frequencies in the system whereas, in static it just goes to another state, how it goes uh, we are dealing with asymptotic state. So, we are uh, it goes to some other state whereas, here we are going to a oscillatory state. So, that is the key thing about uh, dynamic Hopf bifurcation, that is that clear. So, and we saw that here an eigenvalue was crossing, the primary difference is that you will have a pair of eigenvalues crossing over. So, this would be stable and unstable, so a pair of eigenvalues will cross over. So, that is the main difference between this and these bifurcations where the crossover happens along the axis actually, so there will be only one eigenvalue crossing. Kind of yeah, plenty of applications yeah. in real practice. Yeah, real practice. Lots and lots. Any example? Like in which pipe? Okay. Like just to give an example, uh, like you may have a, a combustor where there is no flame. Okay. So strictly speaking, you can have a flame, but it will not stay. So that's like an unstable fixed point and at some other if you vary the temperature or, or something like that and then the flame may hold. So, till some value of the control parameter flame would not hold and then flame would hold. And all the Z without the uh, hollow means yeah. just a circle no? yeah. without any yeah. that means are, those are all unstable is it? Yeah, they, they are in principle solutions, but if you cannot stay at the state. So, I think they are hundred thousand, ten thousand for example, but I think I will not go to that, I will just stick with thermoacoustic. The example you gave is coming under which of these? Yeah, I think this will need uh, uh, much more discussion. So, I would just stick with uh, talk discussing this because uh, you will have to explain each of them much more rigor and show things. Uh, uh, just to answer the question in uh, uh, one shot, uh, all this bifurcation, for any bifurcation there will be something called a normal form, which would be like the very simple differential equation which would show the basic feature. So, if can you reduce your your system to the normal form, so that would be uh, one way to look at it, but I think it is uh, not going to be easy to give an answer without going through a proper lecture, but the example I mean you look at this books and you see um, lots of examples. And simultaneously uh, for same parameter you can have two different solutions. That is also okay. possible. Uh, that is why the branches are. Yeah, here in pitchfork for example, you can have a solution there or solution here. So, if you are here, you get attracted to this, if you are here, you go here, if you are here, you get repelled to here or if you are below this, you get repelled and get attracted to here, here you will get come here. So, so here there are two possible things, here that is not possible, if you are here, you will come here, if you are here, you will go there, if you are here, you will just be blown off. So, this will be like a example of flame thing, if there is a flame and if you are unstable and you can blow off, but there may be a possibility to get a stable flame. So, those are so that kind of examples. Uh, here you will come here, but uh, here you will blow off. So, I, I think uh, I am sorry, I, I would have to uh, be much more elaborate to go give specific examples of each and so on. So, it would not make any sense, but I just want to say that uh, the reason I brought this thing is to say that there are many more things, but wha where we are is where we are here and we are specifically having a uh, dynamic bifurcation that means oscillations are coming, whereas these you do not have that. Now, you have subcritical bifurcations and supercritical bifurcations, again I am not going to go to those things, uh, they also have the static bifurcation also have subcritical and supercritical, I will speak specifically about um, this Hopf bifurcation, I will explain subcritical Hopf bifurcation and supercritical Hopf bifurcation. So, first I will explain supercritical. So, let us say we are looking at fluctuating velocity or something. So, we have stable fixed points or stationary points till here. So, these are filled circles and then 
So, these happen for degree of system which have more than one dimension and so this is actually this is going like this if you look at the other another plane, but so you will see a amplitude here and amplitude here uh, or if you are just plotting the amplitude you can just plot the upper half. So, this would be a supercritical bifurcation you come here and smoothly the amplitude keeps going up, but uh, there is also uh, subcritical bifurcation where let us say you have fixed points here and then you have unstable uh, these are stable these are unstable and then you have these are unstable solutions you can have unstable periodic solutions, but they are unstable. So, you cannot really see them in nature, but they are unstable and uh, this is the this is um, uh, subcritical of bifurcation yeah you had a question no ok. So, Yeah, so, in reality what we see is we actually see solutions here a stable we can see stable limit cycles here. So, these are filled circles. So, the stable limit cycle and this uh, unstable limit cycle here annihilate at the saddle node. So, here you can have a um, saddle node or a turning point or a fold bifurcation. So, this point is called the different names saddle node or fold or turning point and so you can uh, then have these are stable limit cycle solutions that are possible. So, if you look at uh, so thermoacoustic oscillations and if you have a subcritical bifurcation you are increasing the heat of power let us say in our rake tube you come here and then you jump up here, but you can also access these states if you if you are up here and then you reduce the heat of power you will have the hysteresis you can come come till here and then you can uh, jump down to uh, these states. So, this is what we see actually. So, there is a Hopf bifurcation this part is called the Hopf bifurcation it is a subcritical bifurcation then it undergoes a saddle node bifurcation or, a, or, a, or fold or a turning point bifurcation and then you can actually have a stable limit cycle. So, you can have a unstable branch here and then it turn around to a stable branch. So, this is what we saw. So, that is one kind of bifurcation which is Hopf bifurcation. So, so, which is in this scheme of things we are like here. <coughs> I hope uh, you got some idea of this of course, this is not a uh, course on dynamical systems, but uh, uh, you I, I strongly advise you to like listen to the N Peter lectures on dynamical systems or read these books. So, now if you uh, want to get a reference on uh, thermoacoustics, so you can see uh, this paper by P Subramanian, Mariupin, Sujit and Wahi on how to calculate bifurcations in a thermoacoustic instability in a horizontal Riccati tube uh, reference is given. Now, uh, uh, one way we did the solution was to be actually masked in time and you got the solutions right. We started from some initial condition and then I said you can do fourth order Range Kutta or some kind of integration or delay difference equations and so on and we can go forward right. Now, uh, if this is a very time consuming process first thing, second thing you may will never reach unstable limit cycle, because by definition they are unstable. So, you cannot time march to such a state. So, what people do is use things called continuation algorithms where if you find one solution then you can change the mu little bit and then find use this initial use the solution as a approximation for the new solution. So, you have mu then you say mu plus delta mu. So, you have a solution and then 
you try to use that original solution as a approximation to new solution and then try to get a um, new solution numerically so without really marching in time. Uh, so, you can see that in this paper, but I will not uh, describe this, but I just want to uh, now go back to our Riccati tube bifurcation diagram and see it in the context of subcritical half bifurcations. So, uh, we, um, so this filled circles they are the fixed points of the steady state and uh, that, that is uh, a trivial thing, there is no, uh, it is just the atmospheric pressure in the duct and uh, then you have again the solution exists, but you cannot access it because it is unstable solution and you come here and you jump over here, you get the, to this green fill circles that is again the limit cycles, but you see this uh, at this point with, with the fold bifurcation occurs where the limit cycle, the stable and the unstable limit cycle what they say annihilate each other or something. So, you have uh, this is like a, a globally stable uh, regime what any disturbance will die down, you have bistable regime where if you are in the basin of attraction of this limit cycle you will go there, if you are in the basin of attraction of this uh, fixed point you will or, or this uh, steady state you will fall there and uh, there is a basin boundary in between and the unstable limit cycle is just one line on this basin boundary and, and then you have this uh, linearly unstable regime where uh, or uh, it is always unstable, you have any disturbance, any small disturbance and it will exponentially grow to instability. So, this is the heat of power is the I mean k is non dimensional, so heat of power is the uh, parameter that we are uh, fixing or that we are changing. So, this is like the um, on of the mu. So, in general mu can be a vector there can be many parameters, but uh, here it is heat of power. We look at uh, we said that the flame location was another parameter. So, uh, if you change the flame location or the heater location uh, you see this kind of bifurcation and you can see again hysteresis in this model. So, you come till here and then you jump up, but if you are going back you have to come back till here and then you keep going and again you will have a, a basin boundary here and then if you are here then you will fall off to here uh, which is a steady state and in between the this uh, 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 hollow circles which uh, represent the unstable solution and so this is a, um, a completely stable solution a globally stable, this is bistable depending on whether you are on the basin of attraction of this solution or this periodic solution you go there, um, here it is uh, uh, what do you say globally uh, unstable and uh, here is uh, 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 bistable region and here it is globally stable region and this globally uh, th this bistable region is uh, co corresponding to the example that I gave you the students who are uh, half awake, uh, they are sleeping, but if you raise your voice they will wake up but if you are having students who are always sleeping whatever you do that is here and then if you are here they are the, the good students who are always excited. Uh, so, uh, we see kind of a linear stability boundary and a non-linear stability boundary in between you see this bistable region. So, here I have plotted heat of power and, and tau as the parameters a uh, tau is the time lag and so this this is the bistable region that is where the non normality in the linear theory it plays a role. Uh, so, we have subcritical regions which separate regions of global stability and instability, uh, there is another plot of tau versus x f time lag versus flame location, here also you see globally stable and globally unstable and in between there is a bistable region, but you do not necessarily have to always see this, this is this model predicts this in this case there may be other models which predict supercritical bifurcation and in experiments I think people have seen both subcritical and supercritical bifurcation, although uh, people have not quite spoken in great detail in using this language, I mean this dynamical system approach is only being brought in very recently to thermoacoustics. If you have any questions. Even though it uh, reaches the unstable mode, it can uh, change from that mode to some other mode also after a uh, limit of the parameter. Yes, that is possible now that you asked, I will get you a, a reference. So, this is the reference that I spoke to you about earlier by my collaborator Juniper on uh, in general of fluid mechanics triggering in the horizontal Riccati tube on non normality transient growth and bypass transition. Here he gives such a solution, it is possible we can calculate it. So, you have can you see this? So, here you have a uh, uh, unstable solution here, then you go to a stable solution and then you have again another set of unstable solution 
and you have a stable solution. But I do not know if this calculation is uh, valid because they have used linear acoustics for this model and uh, these amplitudes are quite, la uh, uh, quite uh, large. So I do not know how much role nonlinear acoustics will play and whether these results will actually be observed in experiments or not. But nevertheless this model displays this. Uh, so there are actually there is a, um, a stable limit cycle here and there is actually a higher stable uh, limit cycle here which is again separated by a set of unstable. Uh, limit cycles and uh, this uh, 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 I think this uh, uh, these are the points which are the points of minimum energy which is needed to go up till here or something like that. So it is it is possible uh, multiple solutions I mean this is one example of such a calculation any other question. Okay. So, uh, So I just want to emphasize that when you say solution we are kind of addicted to stable solutions we have uh, unstable solution I mean we, we have periodic solutions and uh, solutions which, which are unsteady and that is why we are in the business of thermoacoustics. So I will um, stop my discussions on uh, nonlinear dynamics here I hope you got an overview of this thing and this is of course this is very insufficient because just a brief overview but it is a very fascinating subject read the books go attend the NPTEL lectures and now we will go on to back to our thermoacoustics. So here, so the next topic that I want to speak about is premix flame acoustic interaction. So what we did so far was a very simple model and I characterized the classical stability analysis as well as the uh, new age or modern stability analysis uh, with this non-normality and non-linear dynamics and so on. But then we had uh, uh, the weak point in the model is just a formula or a correlation for heat release rate but you really have to find out how a flame responds to fluctuating velocity. In, and each system differs in different cases. So what I would give is a simple example in which a premix flame will interact with the acoustic field. So uh, you must have all seen Bunsen burners. So you can do this experiment. You can do it at home also. It's not dangerous. If you take a Bunsen burner uh, flame and you put a tube around it, it'll sing. You can try it out, uh, and I will bring a video of that next class. But you can try it out yourself. No danger at all. Uh, you can take a Bunsen burner flame and to place a glass tube around it you should hear it saying at the I mean at the right conditions. So uh, and if you take high speed movies of this you will see if that the flame will actually wrinkle and, and kind of dance like this and uh, of course in a premix flame the heat release is proportional to the area of the flame because everything that goes through the flame is burnt and is converted. So the amount of things that are burnt depends on how much reactant mixture goes through the flame. So as long as there is a flame you have uh, you have heat release rate. So more flame is there more heat release less flame is there less flame area less heat release more flame area more heat release. So it can um, go uh, it can be very strongly correlated to uh, fluctuations in area. So we will take a look at how such a system can be studied and then we will also look at several other systems we look at um, um, systems with equivalence ratio fluctuations lean premix pre vaporized combustors we look at solid rocket motors possible liquid rocket motors and try to uh, see how the heat release is correlated to the velocity fluctuation the pressure fluctuation. So we know how to model the acoustics we have the equations and then we said that either you plug in a correlation or, or have a um, ha have the thing being modeled by CFD or, or some simple analytical model or something. So I will again come do only simple things in class. So we look at how oscillations affect a premix flame. Once you know that if you bring in the acoustic equations we know how the heat release rate will affect the acoustics and there is a feedback. So that is what I will be doing next. So I will stop here now thank you very much.